Hey guys, it's me and today I'm here with all the movies I watched in March. I know this video is late, but that's because I've just been having like health troubles these past couple of weeks where just one day I'm fine, the other day I'm like super sick. So I have been like very bad at like filming videos. So yeah, I apologize. But I watched seven movies in the month of March and I'm very excited to discuss them all with you. First up, we have The Amazing Spider-Man, which came out in 2012 and I gave 5 of 5 stars to. Peter Parker is an outcast high schooler abandoned by his parents as a boy, leaving him to be raised by his Uncle Ben and Aunt, Aunt May. Like most teenagers, Peter is trying to figure out who he is and how he got to be the person he is today. As Peter discovers a mysterious briefcase that belonged to his father, he begins a quest to understand his parents' disappearance, leading him directly to Oscorp and the lap of Dr. Kurt Connors, his father's former partner. As Spider-Man is set on a collision course with Connors all to ego the lizard peter will make life altering choices to use his powers and shape his destiny to become a hero so if you've been around here you know i am trying to make my way to like the older spider-man movies in preparation for no way home which i have to wait for till it comes out on streaming or dvd because i don't have access to a movie theater so i have time thank god and i watched the amazing spider-man this month. I took a little break between Spider-Man 3 and this one because I just I didn't really like the Tobey Maguire, Tobey Maguire movies and just like general consensus is that the Andrew Garfield movies are worse so <laughs> I took a break. Hate myself for that because I absolutely adored this movie like oh my god this is so good. I just really like the way this told the origin story. I love Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man like he's so funny and witty and I feel like that throughout like the course of like the movie starts to like seep into a speed of Parker as well a little bit and I love it so much. I really love the relationship between him and Gwen Stacy as well. I think they have so much chemistry and I really like the relationship that's in there and I barely like any romantic relationships in superhero movies so there's like a huge plus that I was so rooting for it in this movie and I just I loved everything about it. I think it was so good. I really liked the villain. I liked the whole plot. I like I think this was structured really well and I never really felt I just had like a dull moment in it, which I just I love this. I do still prefer Tom Holland Spider-Man just because I relate to that character more like on a more personal level. But I do think that this Andrew Garfield Spider-Man is like so good as well. Then the next movie I watch is Wizard of Favorly plays the movie which comes in 2009. I give four to five stars students a rewatch. Powerful magic cast by Alex spells trouble for the Russos. The kids must go on an adventure to save their family and their existence. I recently did a rewatch of like the entire show of Wizard of Favorly Place and I've just been taking my time with it because it's one of my favorite shows growing up and I just wanted to rewatch it because we have Disney Plus now. And of course, having finished that rewatch of the show, I also had to rewatch the movie. And I had such a blast watching this movie. I think the show and the movie both aged very well. I still had a great time watching these as a almost 21 year old, as I did when I was a kid. And you know what? That's on Selena Gomez. I just really, I love the story of this movie. I think it's so well done. And I really like, just like the focus on family in this as well. I think it's so well done. And the Russo family dynamic is just unparalleled with like anything else. And I really love the sibling relationship between mostly Alex and Justin because that mostly gets developed at the show. Max is kind of just like a hang on, but even then, like that relationship is also so well. But I feel like the Justin and Alex sibling bond is just like stronger. And then I also think this movie did a great job at doing the Teresa and Jerry storyline as well, like the parents. The only thing I don't like about this movie is that its magic system is very different from the magic system in the show which just very much irks me because it's you know supposed to be the same continuity continue continue i can pronounce the word but it's supposed to be like the same setting you know the same world it's not like a spin-off story that has nothing to do with the rest of the show like there's this just a family vacation i take in between episodes and it just bothered me that the magic just works so differently like honestly i can handle with like nothing about the story ever being brought up in the show ever again like pretending as it didn't exist I can I understand that but just like the fact that the entirety of the magic system in this movie is so different than from the show and like directly goes against rules we have clearly set up in the show then next we have Turning Wet which came out in 2022 and I get 5 5 stars to 13 year old May is experiencing the awkwardness of being a teenager with a twist when she gets too excited she transforms into a giant wet panda this was great I don't know like the kind of people you've been following I have seen a lot of discourse on like, my TikTok review page around this movie 
but this was fantastic if you're very barely 13 year old girl you know everything that this movie is so realistic like there, of course there's also like a big element in this movie that is tied into May's like cultural background that I can't relate to but I still think was done phenomenally I really liked how that was done and how it was weaved into the story and how it even though it was like a magical element to it it still like felt very realistic but just all of the awkward cringy like teenager things in this movie I related to so much and oh, it was so good. I also thought this was like very funny. I love the family dynamics. I love the friendship dynamics. I think this is one of the strongest like female friend groups I have seen in a movie in a while. And I love that this is like a movie that's being put out for kids now. Because I feel like and when I was younger, like female friendships were often like very like had like this catty element to it. And I love that this just like didn't have that at all. Then next, I watched West Side Story, which comes in 2021, and I give 25 stars to two youngsters from rival New York City gangs fall in love, the tensions between their respective friends built toward tragedy. I think this movie was too long. I don't know what they could have cut, because I'm, I'm, but I was so bored <laughs> while watching this movie. I did like the music. I liked the, like, musical scenes a lot, but, like, all the rest, I just thought was boring, and I kind of feel bad saying that, because... I feel like everything about this is a masterpiece. Like the acting beside Ansel and Lord is great, phenomenal. I totally, every award they've gotten, deserved. I think the directing is beautiful. I love like different like scenes that were, the way they were shot, the cinematography, beautiful. Oh, the music, like I said, phenomenal. The singing, phenomenal. Like I feel like everything about this objectively is phenomenal, honestly. But I didn't like it. I thought it was boring. And then next up, we have The Amazing Spider-Man 2, which comes in 2014. I give two to five stars to. For Peter Parker, life is busy between taking out the bad guys of Spider-Man and spending time with the person he loves, Gwen Stacy. High school graduation cannot come quickly enough. Peter has not forgotten about the promise he made to Gwen's father to protect her by staying away. But that is a promise he cannot keep. Things will change for Peter when a new villain, Electro, emerges and an old friend Harry Osborn returns and Peter uncovers new clues about his past. So I liked this a little bit less, that well significantly less than the first time in Spider-Man, but I still had a blast watching this. I think this movie did a great job at like setting everything up. Like the first bit of the movie was fantastic, the way everything was set up, and I really loved the ending as well. I think the way everything was resolved and the action of it was very great but just like in the middle there's like this big chunk of time where I feel like not a whole lot was happening I was very bored throughout that but for the rest I love everything else in this I even like kind of am sad that this never got a sequel so it never got a third one because I do think this sets up like something extremely interesting at the end of it and like it never goes anywhere because it was obviously like set up for the sequel and I'm sad we never got that because I would have loved to see that but also on the other side if we would have gotten that we would have never gotten Tom Holland Spider-Man and I don't know what I could would do without that next I watched Olivia Rodrigo driving home to you a sour film which came out in 2022 which I didn't give a rating to Grammy nominated cine songwriter Olivia Rodrigo takes a familiar road trip from Salt Lake City where she began writing her debut album Sour to Los Angeles. Along the way, Rodrigo recounts the memories of writing and creating her record-breaking debut album and shares her feelings as a young woman navigating a specific time in her life. Two new live arrangements of her songs, intimate interviews, and never-before-seen footage from the making of the album, audiences will follow Olivia along on a cinematic journey exploring the story of Sour. <laughs> so, Sour is one of my favorite albums of last year, obviously, and I love Olivia. And I was super excited for this to come out and I watched it the day after it was because the day off was very busy but the day after I watched it and I had a blast watching this. I think this is great if you're a big fan of Olivia. If you don't really like her music I don't think this is gonna like change your perspective but I really loved this. I loved hearing like the different stories behind different songs and like not necessarily like explanations of the lyrics but just like the stories of how these songs were made and like came to be. This movie also like shows the songs like order of which they were written not in the order of they were they are on the album and I really thought that was a fun way to also like tell a story. I love the word development. The performances were fantastic. My favorites were Trader and Good For You. Love them so much. I did, I desperately need them to be made available on streaming these performances because they're so good. Then lastly for today we have Onward which came out in 20 which I gave 3 out of 5 stars in a suburban fantasy world two teenage outbodies embark on an extraordinary quest to discover if there is still a little magic left out there. So this 
I again I find it difficult to talk about because this one is a definition of a meh movie for me where I don't really have any strong opinions one way or the other. I feel like this was very promising and I like the world of this a lot and I do like our two leading characters but it just didn't really deliver anything for me, it didn't do anything special but like also at the same time I have no real complaints about it. I'm sorry that this is a bit of a short video but like I'm talking very quickly which I don't know why I'm talking so quickly as I am but also because like it's already halfway through the month of April, so I don't have the best memory of my thoughts on these movies, so I apologize. But I hope you still enjoyed this video, and let me know in the comments below what you thought of these movies. If you watched them, tell us some movies you watched in April. In March, it's April now. You watched in March. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Good. <laughs>